right there YouTube welcome back to the channel another video on Old Red our project 1983 Peterbilt 359 in today's video we go through the front end and we swap the steer axle over from stud pilot to hub pilot all right now first thing we got to do here is take this wheel off so we got to take the lug studs off uh, these are stud pilot or bud wheels so you'll notice that there is a R stamped on the stud here. That means that this side is right hand thread, the other side will be left hand thread, and these are inch and a half nuts. Now you'll notice that there is no tabs on the inside of the rim like it is here, and that's because the wheel is centered on the hub by a taper on the lug nut. Now I suspect that these have not been off in a very long time, so I've cleaned up the outer threads the best that I can with the wire wheel and put a little bit of lube on them and uh, then we get just got to knock these things off Anyway, so here's where we're at. Got everything stripped down, checked everything out, checked kingpins, checked tie rod ends, checked S-cam bushings. Everything's good there. Need to get a couple new brake hoses yet, some new brake cans. We'll swap those out. I'm waiting on hubs. I'm waiting on shoes. Had to order them. So I thought I'd go ahead and change out belts. Got alternator belts changed out that was pretty straightforward uh, this is all pain in the butt uh, get into that I had to order one of the belts here so I'll show you guys a deal with that when that comes in and just kind of keep getting stuck everywhere I go I try getting stuff done and I got to order parts and whatnot I got the rims that are going to go on the steer axles they're cleaned up ready to go went ahead and cleaned up the old steer rims going to sell them I think I already got them sold just waiting for the guy to come get them and uh, yeah basically everywhere I turn I keep getting held up by something I order parts I get the wrong parts so I think okay well I'll try to hit this today instead of that while I'm waiting on other parts and yeah nothing seems to be going well so I just keep end up tinkering fix the leaking air wiper switch a uh, separate video on that. It's probably already posted by the time you see this. Messing around a little bit with trying to polish out the diamond plate here. It's going somewhat okay. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, I need to try to get this box open. I can't get this box open because this bolt here is all messed up. So I got to try to drill that. And uh, right, let's go ahead and do that. Got to get it done anyway. So. I haven't had this box open yet. God only knows when the last time it was open. Who knows what's in there? So now let's get that drilled out, get that box opened up. See why they put the screws on the side here. It's kind of loose, but I can fix that. 
All right, so here's what I come up with for this box here. Replace these here with uh, carriage bolts, mostly because the the holes were egged out. The bigger head on the square head, and I sucked that in and tightened it all up. And then for the lock here, just made a uh, basically a T-handle bolt here with the washer welded on. I still got to clean that up a little bit more and paint it up, but got that. Then uh, just a L bracket cut with some threads tapped in it. And just take that. No tools necessary. Screw that shut. Just like so. And uh, that's not going anywhere. It's not vibrating. And that's that. Now I can put my gear oil and engine oil and stuff like that in here because there's absolutely nothing worse than leaking bottle of gear oil under your bed. So that'll work out good. The uh, polishing on the diamond plate came out so so. I'm not the happiest with it, but it looks a lot better than it did. I don't think I'm going to try to polish out this whole thing. I'll probably paint certain parts and then maybe polish the faces. Put a lot of time into this and it's not as nice as I'd like it to be, so we'll see. We'll go from there. Alright, so this is what I did with the box here yesterday. Just painted the steps in the bottom here black. It only took about 15 minutes to do. And uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Got a few parts in here this morning. Got a new hood ornament for it. Got my brake cans, air hoses, and a new belt. I think uh, we're going to go ahead and get the belts back on here. And that's where we're going to start. And then we're going to do the brake cans and the air hoses. Alright, now this water pump belt setup is a complete pain in the butt. I hope I never break one of these on the road in the winter time. Try to change that out on the side of the road. That would be a very measurable job. I think this is going to be one of those things you're definitely going to want to stay on top of changing these and uh, do it in the shop rather than on the side of the road. Because you got a few things here. For one, you can't slip the belt between this pulley and this pulley there's just simply not enough room you can't get to this nut to loosen the idler pulley with the air AC compressor in place and you have to lift up the fan clutch in order to get the belt out and you can't get to these bolts that bolt this fan clutch to here with the AC compressor in place. So you pretty much have to pull the AC compressor off to do this. Now your height on your fan clutch basically is just used to locate the fan and not tension the belt and your AC pump is what's used to tension the belt. So you got this belt in place. We're gonna get the AC compressor in place here next and uh, wrap up changing these belts. Alright, so now we're going to change out the brake cans and the hoses. Alright, now before we take this brake can off, I actually want to check and make sure that the push rod length is correct. On a truck this old, you never really know for sure. And what you're going to be looking for is from the center line of the slack adjuster to the center line of the clevis pen, at maximum stroke should be about 90 degrees to the push rod. Now I know it's kind of hard to see here and I'm not even sure if we're completely in frame here but we're almost at 90 degrees at the resting position here so let me go ahead and pull this out for the 
maximum allowable stroke of an inch and three quarters for a tape 20 brake chamber. You can see that we're actually just a hair past 90 degrees. So when I cut the when I cut the new brake cans, I'm gonna cut them oh probably about a quarter inch shorter than these ones are, and then we should be good. Well, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and pull the cutter key out of the clevis pen here. There's no brake, so we can just rotate that out of the way. Should be 15 sixteenths, and they are. So we got the push rod cut to length here. Just gonna throw this back on here. Mostly because this is where my camera is sitting. Okay, apply anti seize to your rod, thread on your clevis. Check your measurement from the brake can to the clevis pin. Then you can go ahead and lock down your clevis pin with the jam nut. Now if you're using the type of automatic slack adjuster that has the little cantilevered clevis pin with the little rod on it, there's actually a plastic gauge that you lay over this slack adjuster with this in place and you want there be three holes and you want to make sure that all three of those holes line up with that gauge and then that's how you know that your clevis pin or push rod length there is set properly. Put a bit of anti-seize on your pin here. Stall your clevis pin. Get a new cotter key. It's always best to use a new one. And being that you can buy these in bulk packs for just a couple of bucks each, or a couple of bucks for a whole pack rather, no real reason not to. to get this thing slammed back together here. Been waiting on these parts to come in for about a week now. It's really kind of screwed me up here. Well, trucking's a little bit slower here at the moment. They agreed to do a couple repairs for some other people. And because this thing's been sitting in the shop here, plugging up my shop. I haven't been able to do it, so I need to get this thing out of here as quickly as possible. So I can get that other stuff done.
and move on. All right, so we've checked, made sure that all of our bearing fit and everything's good. This is a two-piece seal, so this rubber, there's a rubber on the inside of this that attaches, that basically goes on here, and then the actual sealing surface is in between the two pieces of the seal. So I'm gonna take just a small dab of RTV. Smear it around the seal surface here. And this is just a super light skim coat here. That's all we're going to do there. Now we're going to put this hub on. Now this cone here is intended to, to set your backlash on your bearings here. I don't know if this might have originally had that. You could do that with the nut and the cotter key and that would be fine too, but looks like everything's going to be proper. I know that this goes with the hub, so we're going to go ahead and use it. After this has had a little wear on it, I don't know if I'll continue to, but we've got it, we'll use it. Now I'm just going to finger tape this for the moment. The last thing i got to check is to make sure that these brakes with this drum will work with this hub. So I need to just go ahead and we're just set a shoe on here for now. Throw the hub on, make sure that this looks like this is going to work. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, just zip these. Zip these anchor pins out of here. Never sees. Use it. Love it. Kind of messy stuff, but you'll be glad you used it. Next time you got to take this apart. Go ahead and throw our shoes on here. Now being that this has got that spacer in there that sets your in play, don't really need to do anything too fancy, just run this down all the way tight, make sure that everything's seated, then back it off to the first place that you can get your cutter key in there and put a cutter key in it and that should be done. These hubs use the newer style cap than the old ones did, it's a little bit smaller, I had a couple sitting here. I didn't think to grab some new ones. Probably going to go ahead and change these out for some new ones here soon. So just put a little bit of RTV on there and get these things bolted on here, filled up with oil. Okay, make sure you use brake clean. Clean the brake surface of the drum. There is a protective coating that is on these when they're shipped to keep them from rusting, so you want to clean that off, then we can throw the drum on. Alright, now most manual slack adjusters are 9 16 
Some of the automatics are 7 sixteenths. Okay, so we're gonna go till that's tight. Back it off a half a turn. That's normally about right. But we're gonna go ahead and grab a hold of this slack adjuster here. Just check to make sure that our stroke is within spec. And it is. back from buying lug nuts so all we got to do now is throw the new tires on and then we can let this thing down off the jack stands and get it pulled out of here All right, so front end's all buttoned up and on the ground. Did go ahead and check on the torque spec on the axle nut because I know some of you guys are gonna say that I done it wrong or ask what the torque spec is. So for this particular hub with that spacer and the bearings, it's straight 300 foot-pounds of torque is what that's supposed to be torqued to. It is the inner sleeve that sets your end play or preload which I already knew that, but I figured you guys would want to know. Being that this axle nut had a castle nut and a cotter key, I'd just assume back it off just a little bit to be able to get the cotter key in, but this is going to be just fine. Anyway, I gotta get this thing pulled out so I can get to work on the next thing. Get you guys a shot of this thing outside and uh, with the matching steer tires. forgot to show you guys the new hood ornament. I guess that gets to be a special disc for the people that watch to the very end of the video. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Have a great day.